So now that we know that bonding takes place so that atoms can fill the valence, their outermost energy level, the question we want to ask ourselves is how many valence electrons does each atom have to play with? In one of our previous examples, we saw that sodium hydrogen has one electron. Uh, we know this because, looking at the periodic table, we know that it's in the first group and in the first row. So it has one electron in the first energy level. Uh, other examples we were looking at are stuff like this guy. This is the situation where sodium loses an electron to chlorine. And we know that sodium is in the first column, so it has one electron because its electron configuration ends one. S1 chlorine is in the 17th column, and so we know its electron configuration ends S2P5, and so it has seven. All right, that's kind of complicated. Is there a faster way to do this? And the answer is yes. Your periodic table already has a built-in system for immediately telling us how many valence electrons uh, every atom has. The first thing we want to make sure that we do is we're going to ignore this middle section. So don't pay attention to that. And we're also going to ignore this bottom section, so don't worry about that. If we look at the top of each of these columns, there are two numbers, this one and this one. If we ignore this top number and only pay attention to this bottom one, this is how many valence electrons are in every element in this group. So, everything that's in group 1, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, they all have one valence electron. Everything that's in group 2 has two. Skipping the middle section, check this out. Everybody in group 13, we're not going to call it 13 anymore. We're going to call it group 3. They all have three valence electrons, carbon, and everybody in that group has four. Nitrogen, five. Oxygen, six chlorine 7, and everything in the noble gases has 8. This makes it a lot faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little visual shorthand to indicate how many valence electrons each atom has to work with. And this shorthand is called electron dot notation. It's super easy. Here's how it works. To show the number of valence electrons an atom has, all we're going to do is write the symbol, for example, hydrogen, and we'll indicate how many valence electrons it has with a single dot. That's the whole thing. That's it. So, if I was going to try to indicate the electron dot notation for beryllium, which is in what is now group 2, it has two valence electrons. Boron has three. Notice that it doesn't matter where I put them. Carbon has four. It's in group four. Doesn't matter where I put them. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. It is what we are now calling group five. That's the whole thing. So when we get all the way to the left side of the periodic table, excuse me, right side, fluorine, which is in what is now group 7, and all I'm doing is strategically showing how many valence electrons are in the outermost energy level. And everybody is trying to look like a noble gas, and they all have 8. We're going to find out as we do this that 8 is the magic number. Okay? 
That's the whole thing. It's really just that easy. I'd like you to practice that, and I'll see you guys on the next one.